fancy video intro because everything here, this is an emergency system I'm running on because I had a major crash here. So oh anyway, we are uh, we are live. This is the first episode. Ooh, this of, is it. <laughs> this is this is a nice way to just slide into an episode. Um, this is the first episode in 2022 of the future of photography with Adrian, with Imar, we have Jeremiah, and uh, I'm Chris. Hi. Hello. Hello. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy, Happy New Year, New Year everybody. Year this right. is this yeah, it's is starting okay. out great. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, we all survived the holidays in one way mm -hmm. or another, mm -hmm. and uh, we came out <laughs> mostly unscathed on the other side. Mostly, yeah. Well, mostly. looking like this. Yeah, and uh, and uh, before before we get into the show, just one piece of news. I think we need to get this out of the way right at the beginning. Yes, Imar, this the is your last room. episode. <laughs> Yes, my last episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been absolutely fantastic um, doing this with you for, it was May 2019. I actually couldn't even remember. I looked it up. Um, when we started. Yeah, so well done. Thank you. I, well, thank you. It was well, a bit of a blur, so. Thank you so it. much. Um, um, I, I looked yeah. it up uh, end of May. That's when both uh, you, Jeremiah, and Imar both came on board, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which has been 800, I did the math, 895 days. <laughs> or one or 127 <laughs> weeks or two years and seven months so, I, so th long? this is where we have to detox you from your conference you've been on for the last two weeks isn't it because you've got a head full of technical stuff i can tell <laughs> you have you have no you have no idea you have yeah. no idea mm -hmm. um 118 episodes since that's amazing that's a lot that's actually amazing yeah that, that is a lot is yeah a lot. yeah of course, it's we don't amazing. we don't hold a candle to you guys, and and I would say <laughs> absolutely. I don't even know. the I three of us don't hold a candle to you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I don't. Yeah, your output is is just yeah. Though beyond. I listened to a podcast called This Week in Virology, which I highly recommend, which uh -huh. is all of these nerd scientists talking about viruses, etc. They're on episode something like nine hundred and oh, yeah. something. Um, oh yeah. yeah. But but you know it's it's not all about quantity, so. <laughs> Isn't it? Fair point. Yeah. Anyway, Imar, good job putting up with the three of us for so long. Just wanted to. <laughs> yes. No, indeed, thanks for having that. me. Thanks for having me and putting up with me actually. So. Probably more oh, like it. it's been a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. So I. Well, I'm not going to drop off the face of the earth. I will be around. I'll still be a fan, and yeah, I'll keep... still be watching or listening every week. And you should come for visit sure. every now and then. Um, Definitely, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Um So what I've done is I have uh, looked at back at these uh, 118 episodes. I went through the list because we do have a list, and <laughs> I mm. just I just picked out I a can, few I of these. How many? Hmm? Yeah, it's really a lot. Uh, yeah. I picked out mm. the ones that somehow stuck with me for one reason or another. So I want to go through like a hand, couple of hands full uh, of episodes here. Um, mm. Episode 90, deep fakes. And maybe, <laughs> maybe let's maybe yeah. let's think about um, or talk a bit about. Has anything changed since? Is the dystopia yeah. has that become reality? Got worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. So, what so has anything changed? If you think, take that at a slightly higher level. Has anything changed since May 2019? I would argue that possibly the world has changed since May 2019. Yeah. <laughs> In terms a of photography, lot. okay, let's <laughs> let's keep this to photography. Okay, okay. In terms of <laughs> photography, uh, deep fakes are still a problem. Nobody solved that, have they? Well, Not it depends really. they what are... side of the argument you're on, right? In terms They're of creativity, better, aren't they? in terms of creativity, <laughs> they certainly marched forward and and have been become more sophisticated on every single level. Yes. In terms of the social aspect of them, we can pretty much argue that things are getting worse so uh, but parallel universes laws of unintended consequences all the things that we've discussed in the past and that's generally true of most tools that humans create mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> next <laughs> deep and moving profound. swiftly along yes. <laughs> next one next one 105 um and i think imar you brought this topic on board land art oh yeah my favorite that was Andy, Andy Goldsworthy. That was probably quite early on, yeah. was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was, uh, we are, again, yeah. 105. We are now at 208, I think. Wow. So, um, that was 100 yeah. episodes ago. I might um, go back and listen to that one again, actually. You know? The reason that stuck with me is because I hadn't really looked into that whole land art thing 
that oh, much up to that episode. Sure. So that opened up yeah. an entire new facet of photography really, for me. Really, my way into photography, I would say. <clears throat> Is that right? Really properly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you guys mm -hmm. aware of James Turrell and his projects up in the desert? You know, that he's been working on for 25 years. Oh, is that the um, sort of viewing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 um, yeah. I, I highly recommend that you guys do a little uh, deep diving on James Turrell. Uh, T-U-R-R-E-L-L, -L, I think is, yeah. is uh, spelling. But th there's a wonderful mini documentary, maybe 10 minutes long, about some of his projects. One of the most influential sort of uh, use of light artists um mm. ever and works a okay. lot in land art i i would highly recommend that deep dive mm. will do next up on the list 111 adrian the mobile workflow ah yeah oh, yes. has anything changed on your site since because that is almost uh well that's a couple of years ago now i think it, pro well, it probably has i mean i i dive deep into mobile workflow with the, the iphone 12 six. pro max you were using i think i had which i had for a year and and uh then you know i did get a little bit disenchanted with it didn't as experiments go it was a brilliant experiment because i learned a lot uh would i say that i was absolutely converted to mobile photography not really i still i think a number of levels prefer a dedicated camera but yeah it was uh the mobile workflow is still there i still primarily use ios as my operating system of choice for, for my photography so yeah that's still there okay so um <clears throat> next one 115 uh, jeremiah how about quibi who <laughs> oh, <yeah>. you <laughs> remember quibi, quibi? Nope. No, no, <laughs> it's completely gone, is it? It just never took it has off. just oh, disappeared no. from the face of the earth. It's gone. It's... Uh, not only that, is Roku paid a nickel and a dime for their content, and I don't think even that w worked out for is them. That, uh, is that content uh, which has been specifically produced for Quibi in this very specific format and multiple angles and all these kind of things? Is that even usable in another context than a platform like this? Can you make this into a feature length stuff in some way or? Person, personally, uh, I don't think so. Uh, I'm sure there are uh, several startups desperately trying to uh, capitalize on s such a thing. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't think so. I think forking stories is really in the realm of gameplay, and they do that very effectively, and it's a first-person thing, and that gets more sophisticated as headset gaming, Unreal Engine, Epic, all of these, you know, Houdini, Blender, all, all of these get more and more sophisticated uh, in terms of more realism. Some of them are so dazzlingly real, they, they come very close to cinematic reality. So forking stories there is um, is fun because you can create your own story and move it right. any way you want. Uh, and by the way, I first experienced this in 1967. <laughs> I was a, a boy in, in Montreal mm -hmm. and... They had something called, I think it was called Black Box Theater at the uh, World Expo, which took place there, where the audience got to choose the ending of film in 67. And that was considered a very dazzlingly uh, hmm. advanced breakthrough. But in terms of storytelling as a director, I, I, I don't like that because my whole case in point as directing is to manipulate people yes. <laughs> into experiencing <laughs> it in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. This is yeah, this yeah. is one of the reasons why why in photography I'm not the greatest fan of 360 degree cameras because yeah. I'm the one who frames the shot. There is a purpose of my framing. So, aha! Uh -huh. As one who's been experimenting, as you know, from the last few weeks, I've been playing with my Insta 360, yeah. and I have found that sometimes I've, I've figured out a way just to wear it around my neck, go for a walk. It's attached to my earbuds, and I just go. Take a photo, click. Take a photo, <laughs> click. Take a photo, click. And I, I only do it not for one, you know, 180. So it's just yep. in front. And then later I go and just re recompose and take my photo. And mm -hmm. you get stuff that literally you can't. But but you're you not know, the audience. You're the photographer. So you're using that tool. You're not the audience getting exactly. a 360 view and having True. to decide where to look. So. Mm, very true, and and uh, and I'll defend that as a great use of that tool. <laughs> oh, it's mm -hmm. certainly amazing. Anyway, next one up mm. the list, 
Episode 129, that was in June uh, 2020. Uh, Imar, you got an iPhone 11 Pro back then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you still on that? Still have it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is yeah, that... I'll, I'll have it until it dies, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I so wouldn't be. Another six months. I wouldn't be. So, so no, I would... of course, hey, not, not just me, a I new phone. Not. <laughs> of course, just not, not just a new phone, but a new camera uh, in that context. So A new camera, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got the iPad at the same time, the iPad Pro. So that was really, uh, really fun. I remember the back back at the time, Amy, you were in two minds about the camera in that new phone because in some ways you said it was great and in other ways That's you right. said it had so the, the computation was a bit too much for what you were trying to achieve with it. I've kind of gotten used to it. And so I think the settings, I think some of my settings were a little bit off at the time when I got it first, like the default settings. So I think I probably, now I don't go in and look at that very often, but yeah, or maybe I've just become accustomed to it i don't know i don't know do you know that the next version the rumors have it is going to be close to a 43 megapixel camera is that right? you know you know what as long as they as as, as long I thought as they that the, the, apparently the iphone was going to be dead now and that they were going to do something else next doesn't no. seem like a three trillion no. dollar company is going to <laughs> i thought they were going to come up with the next big thing. as long as they don't manage Aren't to put they, bigger they sensors seriously in there they're going to have to do something to kind of, um, you know, go up against the Tesla one, aren't they? The Tesla? In terms of uh, you know, cars the phone, and stuff? Uh, uh, the Tesla no, phone. The, uh, yeah. Is yeah. there a Tesla uh, phone? That looks... Oh, it's a rumor. It's the usual. I don't think... I, I've looked at um, a couple of videos on YouTube about that. And yeah. Oh, that really means it's true, I guess. <laughs> yeah, of, of people handling it and stuff and going, look, this is what Even it Even then. Even then, uh, Kickstarter, mm. case in point. <laughs> Look at all those fabulous things, you know, five years mm. later. I think a Tesla I phone would be really interesting, actually. I thought it was coming would be. straight from him, like. No, no, no. You know? Listen, you, you can't argue with uh, advances in technology. Yeah, whether, yeah. It's got solar it panels, it's going to have its own internet. Of everything, yeah. By the way, I need anything else. Friends of mine, probably speak to your car. Will have wheels? I was gonna say, will it have wheels as well and seats and stuff? (laughs) (laughs) I think think that's already (laughs) in existence. (laughs) I I think I've seen those email. I have to say, I have seen a note the the things about a Tesla fight, and it it does seem to me to be a a really interesting idea if it if it comes Mm. back because you know it just just the ethos of tesla of you know not being burdened with stuff and starting from scratch and imagining how things could be and, and taking a different approach to it um which is what they do with their cars of course um, yeah uh yeah. and uh, i think that could be really interesting i wouldn't like to hazard a guess at this point about if it's going to come out or what it might eventually look like but i i think it could be a really interesting proposition if it i mean i can i could imagine this is a, a very good friend of mine just received his his uh starlink and uh is you know he lives out in the country and and um you know far from a good internet source he, he's been using hues for the last decade which is t- terrible um and he said he's getting 95 down consistently, 20 up consistently. Wow. And this is globally. So a Tesla mm. phone that is connected to their satellites globally, so it becomes a de facto world phone to carry everywhere. <laughs> inside, <laughs> I might add, inside. Mm. Um, that could have some value rather than a, quote, no, it's basically a sophisticated satellite phone, would it not be? I mm. would, I would, uh, I would really like to take an entire half hour to just dive into the potential dystopia that's hiding in there somewhere. But we're not going to well, do this. Do oh, it. do that. Do <laughs> that. I'll be listening. Not today. <laughs> um, episode 169, <laughs> Decimate This. Um, I think, Let's Adrian, you brought oh, this yeah, up. Yeah, the, yeah. the destruction yeah. of photos. Yeah. yeah. That Decimate. stuck with me. That, that stuck like with me because it, it, mm. it, it, it. That was fun. Love it. It turned that into was so much fun, actually. It's still that that must be one. ten years, mm. must be ten, let twelve years old at least. That app now, um, and yeah. I still go back to it occasionally, and I still go back to stuff I made with it in 2010, 2011, and uh, you know, and think, yeah, actually, I, it adds. That's, that's it, not held. That's held up reasonably well. Yeah. <laughs> it it adds so much freedom to your photography because mm. it 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 absolves you of 
having to frame properly of, of, <laughs> of, of all the conventions pretty much and throws everything overboard and goes, mm. okay, destroy it, destroy it. It's a good, you mm. can do this. Chris, so. would you say that it is the visual photographic application uh, parallel to punk rock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes, it goes, it goes in that direction. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Mm. Uh, episode one seventy four NFTs. Uh oh, <laughs> March <laughs> March twenty twenty one. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's no question that the explosion of NFTs have uh, has been exponential. The expansion beyond art has been exponential. It is sort of the leading onboarder of crypto. It, generally. it has, it has sort of, uh, at least in the public um, perception, it has sort of tapered off though. No, it's not, not as much in the news anymore as it used to be back then. That's possible, but the numbers don't lie. And, and right. it did soften. And, and that's just in terms of volume, not talking about market price and overprice and mm -hmm. ridiculous, um, stuff that that surrounds it i'm just talking about the amount of trading and adoption of it uh did hit a bottom earlier i think around the spring and now has kind of started to climb exponentially at uh all over again and that's because new uses are being found there's a company called immutable something i think it's a canadian company but i'm not sure where for example if you are rolex uh, who suffers tremendously from from um, fake fakes in in the marketplace? They figured out ways of of uh, of creating a very small, tiny code on the watch face attached to an NFT, so any watchmaker can basically look at it, take a picture of it, be transported to the smart contract that that certifies its originality. That just gives you an idea of 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 the kind of resources that will become available both in, in in terms of the use of smart contracts that that's really interesting that's uh, a clever use yeah actually. it's really interesting on a couple levels one is that i was given a rolex watch uh once um mm. it ran backwards <laughs> um and uh another reason is that i read i was reading an essay just just the last couple of days ago actually about everything that's happening uh in web 3.0 including nfts and smart contracts and all the other things that are you know the these the sort of you know highly uh spoken about web 3.0 technologies this the the writer of this essay i can't remember the name uh said something along the lines of well all we're doing right now is we're practicing Right. Yeah. Web three. Yeah. The tools are out there. We don't know quite what really the roles they're going to play yeah, in right. the long term. But everybody's practice. Everybody's practicing yeah. using them and trying to find new niches. And that's how we evolve. And that's how we will yeah. get to a point where I don't know all of a sudden NFTs will be useful for healthcare, Everything. right? Everything. Or, or ticketing, be, yeah, and restaurants. Like yeah. Uh, all, communication all with artists. I mean, musicians, tickets, all of those things, and. I think, you know, when you consider that the NFT kind of global market or adoption rate is significant, but there's only one and a half percent of people using it. I mean, it's just tiny. Anyway, and so we, we, we'll revisit in 10 we, years. We, we're not going to finish that discussion here. Um, <laughs> no. Good point. Good point. Let's, say, uh, let's see. Episode 184, Vanta Black. Ah, uh, yes. I had some psychological difficulties with this the, one because you don't want to be so black you can't see it, do you? The black is black. Well, I, in, in the meanwhile, I've seen some videos showing it a bit better in terms of comparisons to different other blacks. And yes, it's very black, but it's not as black as I thought it would be. So um, has it opened up a new universe to artists? Um, a few, possibly. But it has you know, disappeared from the news pretty much. It has. I have to admit that I have a version of it, small, uh, small right. tube of it, and I've yet to use it. Yeah. <laughs> so Which... I, I, I want to, but I've yet to do so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, Apple, Apple again at in episode one ninety nine, the iPhone thirteen. So that was uh, the the one where I switched. To a new one. Mm. Um, all I can say Still is have it? Yeah. great camera. Mm. Here it is. <laughs> nice camera. Phone, um, great good camera. phone. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. So, uh, moving <laughs> yeah. on. 
high well, price. You know the question. The question this you know, you know, is not directly related. Wow. But, um, you know the way you all had the kind of lidar thing, the little kind of. Um, yeah. Is that still a thing, or was it just it, a kind of a novelty? It is. It, for me, not. it was a novelty, and I don't even have the phone anymore. So it, okay. <laughs> it does have two kind of uses. The one is a novelty, like uh, scan your room and uh, have a three D thing of it, and it's uh, it's okay. The resolution is quite there. Um, the other thing is it's built in and it's being used um, without you even knowing when, for example, you take a portrait of someone in low light because the focusing okay. is then done with LiDAR and oh, it does it yeah. automatically. So it, it adds usefulness to the phone, but it's not this... Um, okay. It, it sneaks I mean, in. It sneaks in, I'd say. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could say that the, the big advance in LiDAR photography uh, has been in the archaeological exploration of the world from satellites using LIDAR that have discovered a great new cities or burial mounds or all kinds of things that right. have been previously hidden. And that's really a big advance over the last two years. Right. Okay, last but not least on my list of episodes is 203. That's the one we talked <laughs> about innovation and did this comparison with DJI and Apple. Um, which st was stuck with me for the simple reason that we got, for some reason, a lot of feedback about that. That really <laughs> sparked discussion <laughs> and, and controversy <laughs> and everything. So um, we, I think, spun this into three additional episodes about innovation, uh, looking at different things. So that's the latest do, that mm -hmm. came to mind. How do we feel about innovation looking forward to 2022? Um, and beyond in terms of the big camera makers, the, the ones that are coming on, DGI, all of these things. What's in store for us in terms of a big leap, not an incremental leap? I have no oh. idea. That's, a, that's no. an interesting, to, to, to qualify that question and say in terms of a big leap. Yeah, that that's that that makes it um, much harder to answer, but also much more interesting to consider as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I don't I genuinely I, don't know at this no, point. Uh, I, I I there's, there's so many so many things that could could make it. Uh, you know, be they augmented reality or virtual reality or you know uh, and and other things as well. Um, I would just have to see, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And have fun how, speculating, of course. Yeah, as well. how sharp? You know, how sharp is sharp? I mean, there's what there, do we need mm -hmm. out of a lens? there are developments that have been going on for years, like augmented reality, for example, that have yet to kind of find find their way into some sort of mainstream. And uh, this all might happen in 2022. It might be delayed to 2023 for. All sorts of reasons, including chip shortage, including things not being at the point where they are ready for the masses, and so on. So, I'm yeah, everything is speculation at this point for me. And, and do we do you have does this fit into the Apple uh, creating their own chips versus Nvidia, you know, AMD, all of that? In other words, going to the root or the foundation of how images are going to be processed or VR or AR. Because these chip battles, shortages notwithstanding, are really coming into the forefront now of computer design, phone design, etc. Right. So I think when we look to innovation, we should probably look to the processors for that. And and it ends up being that discussion about uh, what's called vertical integration, where companies, some of the bigger ones, start doing as much as they can themselves without having yeah. to rely supply on chain uh, supplies also. and so on. Yeah. Which I think I think might be a trend in uh, coming in the, in the yeah. coming months because That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because because people, control your supply chain, and 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 the companies are really being bit by <laughs> supply chain issues right now. So there will be even more changes in that direction, more centralization within the companies. I think. I but what does that mean for us as consumers? I don't know. Spend more money. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe better products because um, there's well, less, less friction in the development. <laughs> maybe so. that too. Yeah, sure. Anyway, uh, next on the list um, is Adrian's suggestion to talk a bit about our personal hopes and ambitions for this year. And um, I'm looking at the list and I think Adrian and I, we both have the exact same thing on the list pretty much. <laughs> I want to be... I, I'm I'm missing people. I'm missing workshops. I'm missing the 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 
photographers around me, which virtually you can only replicate this uh, to a certain extent. Mm. So, oh, yeah, well, yes, uh, much, much though I love talking with you guys every week and, and making podcasts and, and stuff like that, it, there, there is definitely an extra dimension to, to totally. meeting up face to face. And, you know, not, not advocating anything unsafe here, right? Just to, for, for clarity, I, I'm not proposing that everybody goes and starts licking each other. Um, but, uh, you know, I am looking forward to being able to, you know, to do more meetups or collaborations or walks or whatever it is, um, you know, in a, in a more sociable way, in a safe way. So, you know, that's, that's definitely something I'd love to do for, uh, for yeah. 2022. Well, as someone who's come out of the cave uh, this season, um, you know, and working with, you know, a reasonably large crew of say 200 people in, in ex, you know, extreme situations. Uh, I can tell you it ain't the way it used to be. It's, we have, you know, an army of, of, of COVID managers. Uh, you have to wear your mask like 12, 13 hours a day. It's brutal. Um, bubbles uh, and, and areas and pods make it not uh, as enjoyable. It's still lovely to be around people and yeah. to have that energy, but um, there's always that sort of Damocles hanging over uh, one that, that really causes everything um, to have a, a, a slight shadow over it. So, so I think we're, we're well, we're, we're still far from whatever it was in what we call the before times, and we may just have to adapt or take pills. I don't know. I mean that that's kind of the <laughs> ideal situation. Just have a have have the whatever miracle medicine ready and if you get symptoms, yeah. just pop the pill. Yeah. Or Nasal even before sprays. you get symptoms. Or that's spray. What I heard yeah. the other day. No, no <laughs> sprays yeah, like, like for flu. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it's uh yeah, it's, it's so tough. hopes hopes and ambitions for twenty twenty two. Anyone else? Yeah, Emo, come on! You, you, this is this is your last chance okay. to, to to speak with us for a while. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. You know, but uh, yeah. Yeah. what are you, what what, what are you I going am... on? What greater thoughts and greater ideas are you going on to? Well, I am going on to um, the idea of just, just simplifying everything. So mm. I'm going to be stepping away from all of the. I've already deleted my Twitter, oh. thankfully. Whoa! Okay. I wish I wish I had the strength to do that. Less toxicity in my life. <laughs> Yeah, it's which is like, brilliant. I, I just, I, I, and the more I look at it, I'm like, why do we need to hear your opinion, your opinion about, like, why do people <laughs> constantly need, feel the need to share their opinions? Who gives an SHIT? You know, just do your thing, stay out of my face, and let, let's all be just happy, you know? Yeah. So, so um, you said for that. Yeah, so I'm going to, both of my children actually have kind of big years ahead of them, so one's finishing my son turns 18 in about two weeks. Um, so that's a big thing. Um, he'd be finishing school, like high school or whatever you would call it, uh, completely. So he's on to the next phase. And my daughter is about to finish her primary and go into secondary school, which is incredible. Wow. So, I, yeah, it's all just kind of I'm thinking I need a long term plan here now. What do I do when these people leave me <laughs> you know i need a kind of a long-term plan so um yeah i'm gonna start thinking about you know where where does my future really lie and stuff so i have a big year ahead of me big, big Sounds things like a lot of too meditation mm. and walks in the woods oh yeah. yes and also a friend of mine has uh, got funding for a really exciting um documentary and um she's got all these road trips planned out for the year uh, to visit really like ancient sites and stuff like that to do some she's like i need a second camera and i'm like i am there so <laughs> oh, hopefully that's good. That, that, yeah. you step in the right direction yeah. yeah so yeah that that should keep me busy as well that's cool. that sounds but, excellent yeah. that sounds like a really We're interesting good. project actually and we, we yeah. expect to see pictures on our discord constantly by the way oh definitely you know i might be more i know i'm terrible discord or i, I am terrible I admit, you'll get better but, um, it does seem like a very and this is no judgment male orientated environment and uh, <laughs> i just haven't sort of felt where i could hop in so maybe you know i can keep you posted on my you should. <laughs> you should. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. 
So, yeah. and to round off this episode, we have a bunch of picks of the week. I'm not going to put anything on screen right now because of my emergency tech system here. Um, but <laughs> uh, we can certainly talk about things. Um, and I'll mm. kick this off. I do have a pick of this week, um, which has nothing to do with photography. And does you want it to be uh, to, to have to do with photography? It's called Airtable. And uh, it is an online service that helps you organize things. If you have ever, if you have ever worked with a spreadsheet to organize things, and that, that was not enough for you, but uh, <laughs> on the other side, you've worked with a database to organize things, and that was way over over the top. This thing is bang in the middle, and uh, it's a paid service, but the free version is very generous, so you can get along for ever with the free tier there and uh, I found this so wonderful as someone who's uh, slightly tech minded like I am um, so if you'd Probably need that good for teamwork with it oh uh, definitely definitely <laughs> definitely um, I'm, I suppose just... I, I'm already applying it to several different projects including another podcast to organize topics into shows into whatever so it's a, it's a, it's a nice tool for someone who needs to organize okay. stuff and cool. anything. That's totally different from what the name suggested to me. When I saw I was like, the name suggests to me that it's a website for booking restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's one of these fancy modern hockey, air hockey tables, you know. Oh, yeah, nice. I do like a game of air hockey, actually. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay um, Jeremiah, what is your pick? Oh, uh, there it is. I just put it in. It is... Um, a series of photographs, this is in the uh, interest of um, what I consider a visual uh, kind of anticipation of what to expect in the coming year. And it is a series of photographs <laughs> called 15 jaw-dropping weather photos. I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> Very gloomy, gloomy, and thunderous clouds and things in the sky. How how do we make beautiful art out of the worst storms that are approaching? Mm -hmm. And so I thought the metaphor stands. Thank you for sharing that. Of a Pretty sure. It's, it's, prob it's prob <laughs> probably the, some of the photographers ended up. Uh, <laughs> Blown in, away. In not, in not that good. <laughs> not of in a good place. way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they are worth exploring. They're, they're pretty amazing photos. Anyway. <laughs> um, yes. Imar, what's your pick of the week? My pick of the week is an exhibition that I hopefully, I thought I was going to get to it this week because I'm still on holidays. But um, my car had other ideas and decided she was going to, I don't know, it was burning and I had to what? bring it straight to the garage. <laughs> there was a burning smell, put it that oh, way. Um, yeah, it needs just tons of work. So I didn't have it. I, I only got it back yesterday evening. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, and I will. This is on until March and it's on in the Glucksman Gallery, which is just inside the gates of UCC in Cork. Mm. Gorgeous building. Um, and it's data streams, art algorithms and artificial intelligence. Ooh. It's a group exhibition by um, several different Irish and uh, international artists and really super interesting stuff in this. So um, if you open the link in the that will be in the show notes, there are a good few images. You have to click on the um, picture on the and website. then you can go to yeah. the gallery. Yes. And and there's a, a nice PDF with some details about all the individual works in it as well that you can kind of just but could be some nice conversations, I think. Oh, that looks um, nice. Come out of that. Uh, and it kind of, oh, I think that's where we're at. Like these discussions need to be had, you know. Very nice. So, Interesting stuff. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, last so. but not least, Adrian. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, I've got, uh, uh, well, my pick of the week is something I've been using extensively the last few days, actually. Uh, there's a, a, a room in our house that we're currently refurnishing. Um, and uh, I have been furniture shopping, which is something that um, I'll be glad when it's done. Yes. Um, and uh, but one thing that's been really useful because uh, I keep forgetting to pick up a tape measure I go, as I go out is the is the virtual a uh, augmented reality I should say augmented reality uh, measuring app on my phone. 
Um, which is it good? Is it accurate, Adrian? Uh, it is not bad, actually. Yeah, um, okay. It's not bad. I mean, it, it'll get it. You know, it, it, I wouldn't use it for engineering. So, so, <laughs> yeah. so, it's, so, so let, let me just explain. That's but for a camera, soft furnishing, yeah. That's, so, that's a camera yeah. that you point at things and then uh, you, you kind of have so, a... Yeah, so, yeah, your, so, yeah, so, on your iPhone. Measure. I can, I can yeah. only talk I can only talk about the one on the iPhone. Uh, yeah. I know that there are... Um, the built-in one. Which is called Measure. Yeah, the built-in mm. one. Um, yeah. that I understand that uh, Google used to have one called Measure, but they, they canned it a couple of years ago. But I had a quick look on the Google Play Store and there's lots of Android apps that do the same thing um yeah so what you get is it, it looks a bit like a camera but in the middle of it is a little target and you can uh, you can attach that target to a point in a picture in my yeah. case let's call it the end of a sofa and then you can walk uh, and of course as you walk and your camera moves the screen the vision on the screen changes as, as you might expect uh, when you move your phone around and then you get to the other end and you put the little target over the other end of the sofa and you click the the button again and it tells you the distance you've traveled um uh, therefore how long the sofa is um and um it's really useful um not only that mm -hmm. but it'll keep it and you can step away and then you can take a photo of the whole sofa and file that in you know then you th then that's a snapshot you can annotate it if you want to save it save it into into your photos or as a file somewhere else or anything like that and so yeah for me that my pick pick of the week this week is is augmented reality measuring apps awesome could you can, can you take uh, the measurement and photo of a couch then take a picture of your room and lay it in uh, not in that particular app. I know that there are, uh, I th at least I think there are some that can do that. Um, I have seen it done. I can't remember off the top of my head whether that's an app on a phone or whether that's a, a different capability, like a, a website that you can use and things like that. Um, so, uh, but the, the iPhone standard measuring app doesn't do that at the moment. All right. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I use these things every now and then. Very, very handy. So that brings us to the end of this episode, episode 208. And uh, Imar, I'm I'm raising my pale <laughs> ale to you. Uh, I shall say cheers. Yeah, and, do uh, take care, I know. May the wind <laughs> be always in your it. back, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, thanks, everyone, <laughs> for uh, for listening. Um, and uh, starting next week. Happy 2022. Yeah, starting next week, it's just the three of us. A threesome. <sighs> sad days. Sad days. <laughs> anyway. No, 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 don't be sad. Don't be sad. Come on. I'm not that good. <laughs> yeah, but neither are we without you. Yeah. <laughs> ah, stop now. Don't be putting the guilt on me. <laughs> yeah, okay. look, I'll come back and do, I'll, I'll make special. Do some appearance. guest spots. Yeah, yeah. Some guest yeah spots, that'd yeah. be fun. Some, yeah, some yeah, cameos. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, yeah. How, how does a podcast cameo even work? Okay, let's well, ask out. Adrian. He does them with Marie, right? You you do guest Special spots guests. on your yeah, own. we do. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. There we go. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, and here's to a great 2022. Let's make the best out of it. Cheers, yeah. everybody. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Uh, take bye -bye. care. Bye bye. Bye. bye.